Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 77 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. I am once again Brent Coley, your host, elementary principal in beautiful Southern California. Joining me today, I have a personal friend joining me today and fellow educator in Southern California, Solomon Petchers. Saul, how you doing, man? Hey, Brent, how are you, buddy? Fantastic. We are in my office. It is a Saturday recording. And I'm excited about the chat today. Uh, we were talking before we started recording, and I said, well, well we got to stop because <laughs> we need to be recording what we're saying right now. So that's what we're going to hopefully replicate right now. For anyone who is not familiar, who doesn't know who Solomon is, give us a little background. Who is Saul? Well, first and foremost, I'm a husband and a dad. Uh, dance dad now and a daughter in college, <laughs> um, but I have uh, been teaching now for 23 years. I can't wow. believe it's 23 years. Yes, 14 years was at elementary, and then the rest was at, actually all of but one year was at middle school, and I did one year as an assistant principal. It's it goes fast. It goes 23. Fast. I'm in. I'm happened. in. I think this is 24 in education now. Yeah, <laughs> it it goes by in a blink. We're on the downward side, uh -huh, the downward uh -huh. side of the hill. So well. Um, I'm excited today because it's a topic that you and I have kind of talked about for a while. Mm -hmm. And like the title of this episode is Writing a Book for Kids. Because I thought, gosh, this would be a cool story for people to, to listen to because you have written not one, but two now books mm -hmm. for kids. One is already out. The other one is soon to be released. And we'll have you talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit later. I've written a book not for kids, more for adults. But I thought, gosh, what I want you to tell me, because I'm very interested, but anyone listening who may be thinking, gosh, I'd like I'd love to write a book for kids. What tell us the story. Like, what was the inspiration? Because I think your first so first of all, tell us about your first book. Like what what was the inspiration the path, behind yeah, that? The yeah, path. the path. So uh, I grew up in a big family, and uh, well, first of all, my cousin, I had older cousins that always liked to scare the heck out of us, <laughs> and so uh, my affinity for scary stories or stories with tension has always been there. Uh, a Ghost in the Attic I wrote over 20 years ago. I wrote it while I was in college, uh, actually right, just out of college, and uh, I remember, I don't know if you've read a, a blog post that I had a while back, or, or just a recent one actually, uh, it talked about how... Um, I had a college professor one time tell me. Oh yes, yes. Oh, this is college professor. Powerful. <laughs> college professor. Uh, I won't say the, the the school. It was in Indiana, uh, but uh, it was a creative writing class. And I turned in this this uh, story that I was really proud of. I was beaming when I when I turned it in. And about two weeks later, I got it back. And the professor very nicely she says, um, "You should probably choose a career that doesn't involve words." And she said it like it, it, almost tongue in cheek, like you know, it was just it was terrible. And the editing part, I can see where you know she she had issues, but the story I thought was was great. So, you know, fast forward a few years, I I, I wrote this this uh, story called The Ghost in the Attic, and I I think in the back of my head that professor was always there, and so I I kept it under lock and key for the longest time. And uh, this past was past year and a half ago, I guess it was now. Mm -hmm. I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna pull this out, and there's been different variations of the story over the you know time, and I decided to uh, to get it on the computer again. I had to rewrite the entire thing. Oh, really? Yeah, I had to rewrite the entire thing. So, <laughs> so, and I wrote it, and then I changed it from third person to first person. So I changed it that way, and then so um, I decided to go ahead and 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 just seek out how to get it published um, because right now the traditional way of going through a publishing house is really challenging i mean you have to get a literary agent first and then you have to go you know get accepted there yeah and then go to a public publishing house and hopefully they'll do something for you now that you could do everything really on your own which yeah. is kind of nice well that's uh, first of all gosh what you just i'm, I'm going to unpack what you just said <laughs> i mean about first of all the professor's comments so like the the side side note moral of that story for anyone listening is a comment like that that was made 25 plus years ago it kept something that you had written that you were proud of, Ghost in the Attic, under locking. I mean, powerful words. I mean, that can heal, but also completely tear down on something like it's that. It's an edgy influence story. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, but, gosh, I love because there's such a similarity because I've written a story that I wrote mm. I don't even know if I've ever told you this, that mm -hmm. I have written. I wrote, I, I years, it was my first year of teaching, 
One evening we went and saw a, uh, a an author talk at a, at, a, at a school, Robert Sansushi. Uh, he, he wrote children's books, like illustrated children's mm-hmm. books. They kind of are like 30 pages with a, a whole picture on one side and the text right. on the other, right. that type of thing. And I remember seeing him thinking like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. That's I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And I went home and for the next few months and turned into I I wrote I wrote a story okay. that that like you said the iterations over the years I'd go back and I would change it and it's probably it's probably gone through a dozen different inter- iterations that is sitting in a hard drive now in the <laughs> cloud somewhere that I've never done anything with. Right. Um, but it's always been a dream. So that's why talking with you, it's like, ooh, you have inspired me. Like, you know what? I need to, and my, my daughter, who is in a, a writing major in college, is like, Dad, you need to do something with that. And you're telling me, you can. You need to, yes. You can. So, so you, didn't go the, you didn't go the traditional publishing route because now with self-publishing, because you're right. I mean, unless you're J.K. Rowling, I mean, yeah. it, it's – very, or Stephen King. It's yeah, going to be right. very difficult. But so how how did so you've got it? You had it written. How did you go about the actual getting it published? Uh, so about a, probably about a year and a half now. I guess it was maybe more than it's more than that now. I I just started reading some articles and then looking on on YouTube is like man, I wish I wish it were younger. I wish we had YouTube. Our lives would be so much easier. Oh man, I tell my <laughs> students that all the time. Like you guys have YouTube. Like yeah. just. Pull up with something, you know. You have something it, called the internet. <laughs> yes, yeah, I always say it. I say it that way too. You know, you guys have this thing called the internet. The internet. Yeah. Yes. So the uh, so the YouTube. Uh, I found <laughs> lots of really good information. Um, publishing, self publishing with Dale was one of them. Yeah. Uh, Mika Osaki was another one. And just looking at the listening to these guys talk about the process and how to go from point A to point Z and get it all done. And and I was like, you know, I could I could do this. I could do this. Yeah. And so. I went through that process. So you reached like for so at so you you had it written. So I know normally, let's say you are a, uh, an author that signed with a, somebody, mm. you go through an editor. How had right. how'd you how'd you get that one edited? So what I did was I went to Upwork. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with Upwork? I I've heard of it, but not overly familiar. It's like Fiverr. Okay. Uh, same idea, freelance. There's people freelancing. Freelance, and I found a gal in Indiana, and she was char- she charged about there. I think it was at like thirteen bucks an hour okay. to to edit it. I gave her a, a ten hour window uh, to to do it and 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 set, get set it up. And and I thought <laughs> I thought oh I got it back. It's ready for publishing. Oh. Okay. And then I let a a friend of mine read it, and she asks if she can have a, a former student of of mm-hmm. a, a former student of mine yes. read it. Uh, Avery Poznanski. Yeah. She's she's brilliant. She's yeah. a junior over at uh, over mom at, used to teach yes. her at my school. She's fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. And, and Avery looked Karen. at it. <laughs> yes, and Avery looked at it, and she said. Um, can I edit this? <laughs> I said, and I, sh- I but, said, but it's sure. already been edited, yes. Avery. Like isn't it done? I mean, one big edit and it's good. And she, she tore into it like nobody's business. And I was at first, I was, I was taken aback. Just like, probably the best thing that could have happened to your it story. Really was really, yeah. really. She really is the best thing that happened. And she tore it apart. And I, and I looked at it for a second. I was like, wow. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm not back in that college story, but the idea of people someone editing my work, it's like, oh wow, that's there's hard. a lot of work to be done still yeah. on this. And I I went through several revisions on that and edited it myself and then sent it back to her and uh, edited edited it again and, and uh, a couple other people looked at it and they 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 the, the more edits I made, the more edits I needed to make. Uh-huh. Uh, which was crazy. Uh, and and even today, there's like one or two mistakes in the published edition of it. And I was like, I'm done. I can't. I can't yeah. do anymore. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's really the, the the. I think editing is the beast yeah. of the the whole process. And it's so uh, vulnerable mm. when you when you like you said you, you gave it to the editor who you don't know. Mm. So, but even then, it's hard enough when it comes back and you're thinking, Wow, how many red pens? How many digital red pens <laughs> did you use? Um, I know when I got my manuscript back from from the editor, it was like, ooh, it, it's putting it out there for somebody to read uh, is terrifying. terrifying. And I think like for for somebody you knew, like for Avery or for somebody you or other, it's like, mm-hmm. ooh, this is somebody like this is a friend or this is somebody I respect their opinion. So I really hope they think it's 
good. Yeah, I don't want to look. I don't want to look dumb because I made dumb, you know, mistakes here. And yeah. I, it's funny you see you feel yourself getting transformed back into a, a student again, mm-hmm. afraid to make that mistake in class, or you know, afraid to do to to take a chance, take that risk. Yeah, yeah. But I've read your book, and it's. It's really good. I really, and, and I'm not saying, I mean, you were saying before we started recording, somebody compared it to what, the, the quirkiness of R.L. Stein, yes. but the relationships of Stephen King. Yes, that was probably and, the best thing ever. That, that, that's, <laughs> and, I, and, and when you said that, I was like, yeah, it, it, it's got the, the R.L. Stein feel, which is great. I mean, that's what mm-hmm. kids love to read. Absolutely. But at the same time, as an adult reading it, the relationship aspect of it. I mean, character development is oh, what yeah. it's... Oh, yeah. You can have a good story, but if you have characters that you don't care about... It, oh, totally. It, it's the same thing with TV shows. I mean, like Walking Dead. Let's, yes. I love yeah. The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm, in too. terms, of, The reason that show is great, because it's not about zombies. It's right. about people. Yes. And and the character development is awesome. So so you've got it edited. Then what, do you, then what did you do? So uh, during that editing process, I started to uh, look onto Fiverr.com and... Uh, I, I bounced ideas off my wife and said, how would, do we want this cover to look? Mm-hmm. And I, I had some several ideas, different ideas of how I wanted to wanted it to look. And I, I definitely wanted the silhouettes. I have, I have the two, the two yeah. boys on there. Um, it's Moose and Samson on there. And uh, I wanted that, but I had no idea. I was thinking putting the ghost in there. I mean, I had all these crazy ideas, and I found a gal on Fiverr, um, dot Fiverr.com. Fiverr, and which is great. She's great. And my cover was, was done from somebody on Fiverr too. Yeah, and and she was I think from Ukraine. Yeah, this gal and and she was great to work with, and she came back with this idea that totally blew me away. And um, and and we made edits back and forth. Hey, can you change this? Can you change that? Yeah. Can you fix this? Uh, she even she even actually called out some of the editing on the what the wording I had on the back. So oh, wow. that was kind of fun. She's like, hey, I think you might need a comma here. And I was like, yeah, I think you're right. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, awesome. But yeah, so and that that part was hard too. Even writing that, writing the blurb on the back yeah. uh, to, to to interest the reader. So and then, how you how did you get it published in terms of like, how did you do that? So you got on, the cover, you got the you got manuscript. Now it's time to put it in Kindle form, put it in paperback form. How do you how did you do that? So I found another uh, another guy um, on the East Coast and on Fiverr again, mm-hmm. and I was chatting just chatting with him, just asking, hey, is, you know. You know what do you charge for this? And he said, "How many chapters?" And he went through this. He goes, "I'll do ten bucks each. Ten bucks for the Kindle format. Ten bucks for the paperback format. And I'll fix it whenever you know whatever you need me to fix. I'll fix on there." And I was like, 20 bucks to do something bucks. I have no clue of doing." And I tried it. I actually tried doing yeah. the format. I was like, "No, I'm done. I'm done. If I get paid twenty bucks to get that sure. done, then then it was well worth it. Yeah, well worth the stress." And and he, you know, when he I, there was a couple of little mistakes, just little little things, and. I just contacted. You went back and it. forth yeah. with them, and he yeah, it was it. like a, it was a business, like it was a yeah, like a partnership. It's, it's almost a, like. it's a con- independent contractor. He's he's okay. So so you've got the finished product. It's it's formatted for Kindle. It's formatted for paperback. Now it's time Amazon. Time for the YouTube again. Okay, uh, to find out how <laughs> to get it onto Amazon, um, the Kindle Direct Publishing, uh-huh. and uh, how to do that. And and I just and Kindle's re- I mean uh, Amazon's really good. That that website's really good. When you're uploading information, it, it takes you through every step, even the ISBN number. Oh great! It'll take you. It, it'll give you, gives you that for free. Okay, like, that's cool. I mean, I heard other people pay, you know paying, you know sixty, eighty, hundred dollars for that. Wow. Um, and I I don't plan on keeping uh, you know taking it off of Amazon, so it's sure. it's permanent there. And um, and you walk really there's three major steps, and the first part is what your book is about, who is about. You're gonna have to use um, key terms or, or or taglines things yeah. like that. And then the second part is um, is picking your your trim, mm-hmm. yeah, what kind of what kind of what cover kind of you book? want, and then uploading uploading the the book itself the uh, the the manuscript itself, and then the cover separately. Yeah. And then they have a cool little feature. It's a preview feature, and you can click on that. And it shows you what it looks like on the Kindle, and then what it looks like as a book. And it, and it gives you all these. I mean, it is literally a step by step. Anyone who's got an idea for a book and really wants to take it to the next level, it takes you step by step. Any errors that were were in there, it lets you know, hey, this trim was too too small, too big, and, and go back. And then the third part is pricing. And that's the beauty of what you're saying is 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 what why I wanted to talk with you and record this is it can be done oh yeah it, 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 like you don't need 
you don't need a big publisher to do this. Uh, and, and, um, you don't need a small publisher. I mean, like like Edumatch mm-hmm. Publishing, which again, Sarah Thomas, you are amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. She exactly. She gave me my shot, and my book is out there because of Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, but but for someone who who because I know that a lot of people are going to 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 Edumatch Publishing, and they're going to Dave Burgess, and not everyone's going to get picked up but that doesn't mean that that story isn't worth sharing and you're it's like just do it get get out there because they're walking you through the whole step the last step was pricing so how much you want to charge yeah how much you're pricing if you you know if you stick with uh if you do like exclusively amazon i mean you get on the kindle like 70 percent back which is kind of cool and then the paperback it's 60 percent back as long as you go exclusively with with amazon and you can option out of that you can go i think it's 40 percent and 30 percent whatever it may be but yeah, I, I mean, it's so true. I went from knowing zero about the process. In fact, the entire process, either traditional or self-publishing, was intimidating. Yeah. But I just knew I wanted to get this out there, and I and that was my kind of my bucket list thing. Like I got to get this out. I've had this in you know sitting in me for so long. Sure. I have to get it out. And so anybody really, you really just can do it. I mean, just it's writing. Step by step. I would say writing it's the hard part. <laughs> writing was hard. In, in terms of like, because once you have the yeah. story. For me, it was, I mean, writing was the hard, but once you have it, then it's like, okay, I don't know how to get it published, but I can go to the right place and it's going to walk me through step mm-hmm. by step. Mm-hmm. And they do all the, so like, you're not printing these in your garage. <laughs> no, Amazon, no. Amazon is doing all that for you. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and they're going to take, they're going to take their cut, yep. but it's worth it because oh, wow. you don't have a, you can park your car in your garage <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to have all the overhead up front to buy a bunch right. of stuff. No, no, you can buy, I mean, you can buy your, you, they even sell you the, uh, the author copies at cost. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, so I, you know, I've done where I've, I've did some, um, some uh, assemblies and things like that mm-hmm. where, hey, I have these books here, kids want to buy them, that's, I can bring them in and supply right there. And, yep. you know, it's, yeah. it was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so that's your first one. And then you, Tell us about because I'm excited. I read your first one because it's out. I've pre-ordered the second one. It's already already in my Kindle <laughs> in my Kindle uh, thing. Uh, Feasters is your next one. Tell us about. Tell me about that one and Feast- anyone who would be interested. Feasters uh, is Feasters was a challenge to write only because I wanted to keep it for uh, for elementary for middle school kids. This may be a little more advanced for than than uh, for elementary school kids, uh-huh. but for middle school kids all the way through adults. And so it is a, a teenage vampire story that takes place in a post-apocalyptic zombie world. And the zombies, they've, they've named the zombies Feasters. Okay. Um, which is ironically, um, well, it, it's a story about acceptance. It's, it's really is a story about, it's like The Walking Dead, um, where it's about relationships. Yeah. But the zombies are always there. Uh-huh. To let you know who's really in control sure. of the whole thing, you know, sure. and so it, it has a lot of back backstory. These these vampires grew up in a human society, and they were uh, they were persecuted. There was laws enacted against them, and they so much so they had to fit into the fit into society. Okay, until the feasters came, uh-huh. and it turns out that uh, they meet the person who was responsible for uh, the the zombie outbreak. As I said, as a fan of that <laughs> genre, the the apocalyptic tales and stuff like that, I am intrigued. Good. <laughs> I, I am intrigued, and I will look forward. I will look forward to that one coming out. So, um, when is that coming out? May twenty sixth, which 26th. is World Dracula Day. Oh, really? <laughs> I looked this up. It's a true thing. And and May is also this is true. Also, Zombie Awareness Month. <laughs> And a few years ago, the CDC actually came out with a what would happen during a zombie apocalypse, and uh, and what would you do? And it was really more of of you know diseases and stuff like uh-huh. that, and like Wyoming would be a safe place to go and things like that. So I was like, what a great what a great <laughs> your timing of the of the release is pretty good. That's awesome. Well, um, we'll finish it out. I want to. I would. We'll give you some. We'll have you give like the links and stuff like sure. that of how in a second, but. As I've started doing in the last couple of episodes, let's let's totally change gears and finish the episode with some rapid fire questions. All right. You don't know what these questions are. They're not hard. Don't worry. It's not a <laughs> test. I don't have red pan or anything like that. Uh, and they have nothing to do really with education. All right. So what are you currently listening to on Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music? Like, What's the last thing you listen to? Uh, P.O.D. P.O.D. I know you're a big P.O.D. fan. <laughs> Favorite TV show or Netflix or whatever show? 
Uh, right now, my favorite TV show is uh, it's a tie between Goldberg's okay. and American Housewife. American, okay. I haven't seen them. I know of them, but I haven't seen them. 80s, 80s vibe. Got it. That's, that's true. Mountains or beach? Mountains. Mountains. Favorite Starbucks drink? Uh, soy vanilla latte. Soy vanilla Simple. latte. Mm. <laughs> Favorite salty snack? Uh, I, you know, I like, uh, I like, I like, I fry up pepperoni. <laughs> fry it? Like in a, Take pepperoni, in a pan? Fry it with a little olive oil and it gets crispy like chips. And I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice and salty. Oh, man. I haven't, haven't eaten lunch yet. That sounds really good. <laughs> you can good. also put cheese on top of it and then pop it in the microwave, and you have, like, nachos, but it's just pepperoni. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Change There's got to be somebody who's listening right now in their car. <laughs> they're, they're nodding their head, or they're already – their head is in the uh, in the fridge right now seeing if we have any pepperoni. I love it. Favorite sweet snack? I like cake. Cake? Hey, hey, I just love cake. My wife keeps a steady, steady – uh, Stream of cake and, and brownies and in the brownie. house. So, yes. The the middle of the brownie or the side? I'm a side. I Me like too. The edge. I Gotta like have the edge. Especially right out of the, oh, out of the oven. Man, that's so good. My son, he's like, no, Dad, you're crazy. He's like, no, this is a good relationship. <laughs> you can have the middle and I want the crusty on the ones on the side. Uh, and so, speaking of books, what are you currently reading? I am reading a book right now by Patrick Johnson. Uh, he's a guy I connected with on Twitter. And it's called 1223. 1223. And it's a time, it's about uh, two uh, two characters, uh, I'm sorry, two writers who meet at a convention and realize they are writing the, same, the same story, but with each other in their story. And they know about each other so much. And it involves, <laughs> al- I know, it's great. It's a novella. It, 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 um, it involves awesome. uh, alien invasion as well. And so I'm, I'm actually uh, probably a... Uh, a third of the way uh, oh, wow. left to go. Very cool. And two more. Since we're talking about like books and for kids and stuff like that, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Oh, it was it was hands down Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Yikes! Nah. Shaggy. <laughs> All right. And lastly, favorite kids cereal. Oh, it's it's hands down. It's also uh, Lucky Charms. I love Lucky Charms. Okay, I love Lucky Charms. L- Lucky and it Charms is magically are... delicious. They... Think, is that a plug? Are they, they, they going to... There's not a, spon- <laughs> not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But uh, if uh, Hormel Pepperoni or something wants... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no sponsors. If you're out there, Hormel. T- Hormel, if you're listening, um, <laughs> you can send a case of pepperoni and fr- Solomon and I will fry it up and uh, make some pepperoni nachos. That really sounds good. Um, so good. Awesome. Well, for anyone who is who wants to connect with you, uh, Solomon, how how can they do that? Uh, my website at uh, Solomon S O L O M O N Petchers. That's P E T C H E R S dot com. You were kind of my inspiration for that because I kept on looking back at there your we website and going, "Okay, what could I do?" Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Glad it could help. And then you can reach me on uh, at, at, at Facebook at author um, Solomon Petchers dot uh, author Solomon Petchers, and the same thing with. Um, Instagram and Twitter is just Solomon Petras. Solomon Petras, awesome. And the book Ghost in the Attic mm-hmm. on Amazon mm-hmm. already, mm-hmm. and you can pre-order Feasters yes. in May twenty six. Twenty six, yes. Dracula Day. Dracula Day. World Dracula Day. <laughs> world, not just National <laughs> Dracula. It's World and Dracula Day. We, month. And Zombie Awareness Month. Two of my favorite things: <laughs> vampires and zombies. That's a, well, the fact that you're meshing those, uh, very interesting. Well. So, man, thank you. As always, I, I love chatting with you, and, I, and hopefully someone got something out of this. And, and maybe someone listening right now, like myself, who has that, I have a story that I would like to do something with. So I need, you, you've encouraged me to, you've nudged me to, to move forward in that process, and hopefully someone out there will, uh, yeah. will be encouraged to share their story with the world as well. Absolutely. So Awesome. And everyone, thank you for listening. Appreciate you. Again, if you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe. Uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, um, or you can listen on my website at brentcoley.com. Go to the podcast page there. And uh, if you want to pick up a copy of my book, Stories of Edu Influence. Awesome book. Thank you very much. Love that book. Appreciate it. Uh, Stories of Edu Influence.com, or you can also find a link on brentcoley.com, or you can go to Amazon, Stories of Edu Influence. All right, everyone, thank you once again for listening, and until next time, have a good one.